In this video, we'll be looking at acid and base dissociation constants, that is Ka and Kb. All right, so let's get started. Now, weak acids, weak acid, we say they are weak electrolytes. What that means is that they dissociate partially. So weak acids, dissociate partially. All right, so unlike strong acid, we know that strong acid would dissociate completely to give us H plus in solution, and then we won't have any of the initial amount of the acid we are dealing with in there. But for weak acid, they are quite reluctant to dissociate in solution. So what happens when you write equation for weak acid, we use reversible arrows to show that whatever product we are having is going to react to form the acid back, okay? So let's assume we have a weak acid HA. For a weak acid HA, when you put it in water, it's going to dissociate partially to give us H3O plus plus A minus. So we are using the reversible arrow because we are not going to be having a lot of is through plus in the solution it quickly reacts with a minus and give us h a back so for that reason we say that these acids are weak acids they do not produce high concentration of h plus or h through plus in solution okay so now when we write the equilibrium constant for this we we'll say that k is equal to the concentration of products which is h3 O plus times concentration of A minus divided by the concentration of the reactants. Now you notice that water here is liquid and we don't include that when we are, write, when we are writing equilibrium constant. So we we'll just write the concentration of H A. Okay, so this is going to be the equilibrium constant. And when it is an acid, it has a special name known as acid. dissociation constant so it is represented as ka okay ka that is acid dissociation constant all right now what you have to take note of is that ka will be constant at constant temperature if the temperatures are not changing then we can be sure of the ka value we have for a particular weak acid okay but once the temperature begins to change the ka value as well change so ka is dependent on temperature okay now again let's consider the acid ha we have the acid ha with a concentration of c moles per dn cube c moles per dn cube and let's assume that because it is a weak acid it didn't dissociate completely, so we have x mole per dm cube of it dissociating in solution. So how do we represent that? We will have HA plus H2O, a reversible arrow, then we have H3O plus plus A minus. So initially we said we have C moles per dm cube of HA. Now because we just introduce the acid, we are not going to be expecting to have any concentration of H3 plus and A minus. So this is going to be the initial concentration. Now, as a kilogram, or when a kilogram is, is established, we said we had X mole per dm cube of the acid dissociated. So as a kilogram, we'll be having C minus X that will be the concentration of HA that is left in the solution. And then we'll have X mole per dn cube of H3O plus and A minus, okay? All right, so what if we write the Ka expression for this? We will say that the Ka is again equal to the concentration of H3O plus 
times the concentration of A minus divided by the concentration of the acid H A. Okay, so now we are interested in the concentrations of H two plus, which over here is X. So we can say that this is X. Concentration of A minus is what also X divided by the concentration of HA that is left at equilibrium. Now that concentration is C minus X. C minus X. Okay. So that's what we're going to have as a Ka expression. But then there is one thing that we have to take note of because this is a weak acid. HA, we assume that HA is a weak acid. That means the amount of H3 plus that we are going to produce in solution is going to be very small. So in most cases, we assume that it is negligible compared to the concentration of C. So this is so small that when we subtract it from the whole concentration of C, we are still going to have almost equal value of C. So what do we do? We say that C minus X is approximately equal to C. So if that is the case, then we can say that Ka is equal to X times X, which is going to be X squared divided by C. Is that right? X times X divided by C. So what if we want to know the exact value of X? That means we'll have to make X the subject. So X squared will be equal to Ka times C and X will be equal to the square root of Ka times C. I hope you understand that. All right. So now if you come back here to the equation, we'll see that X represent the concentration of H3O plus as well as A minus, right? So we'll say that X is equal to concentration of H3O plus, which is also equal to the concentration of A minus. So we must as well say that H3O plus is equal to the square root of Ka of the acid we are dealing with times its concentration, okay? That is going to be the expression for the concentration of a particular acid. So let's call this equation one. Now, let's say that we are taking the negative log of both sides of the equation one, negative log of both sides of equation one. So what should we be expecting? We'll be having minus log H3O plus concentration being equal to, now we want to get rid of the square root symbol. And so what do we do? We take negative log of Ka, which is going to be exponent one, over two, that is what we do if we don't want to write a square root, okay? So that's what they are going to have over there. And because it's logarithm, it's going to be Ka plus C, okay? So we have to take the negative log of C also. So this two will be negative log of the concentration C to the power one over two. Now, we know that we know that negative log of H3 plus concentration is equal to pH. So negative log of H3 plus concentration is equal to pH. So we we'll just say that pH, pH is equal to, now we, we would like to bring the half here down that is how we do it so garrison to simplify the equation. So we'll bring the half down and we'll have one over two into brackets the negative log of Ka, right? And this place two over here we also have one over two into brackets negative log of C. All right. So another thing to take note of 
if we have ka and we take the negative log of it we call it p k a p k a is equal to negative log of k a so our equation now will become p h equal to 1 over 2 p k a right and then when we expand this bracket so we'll have negative multiplying the half so it will become minus 1 over 2 log of c okay so we use this expression we use this expression in calculating for this expression we use it to calculate for the concentration of weak acids okay now what if it is a weak base if it is a weak base well we'll be having the same thing if it is a weak base we'll say that OH minus concentration will be equal to the square root of KB why KB right KB times C so KB is equal to the base dissociation constant KB is base dissociating constant all right so when we are dealing with base this expression we use now when we want to write the equivalent for the pH then it's going to be P OH to be equal to 1 over 2 P K B minus 1 over 2 log of the concentration of the base so this is how we work out acid and base dissociating constants okay now let's take a look at this question now the question says that it says calculate the pH calculate the pH of the following solution then in that solution we have 0 0.1 molar H2SO4 0 0.1 molar H2SO4 and then we also have 0 0.1 molar aqueous NH3 okay so let's solve for the I Let's solve for the I. Now, I, let me use this. For the I, we have, when one molar is two, as a four. Now let's write the equation. We have H2 as a four, which should dissociate to give us Two moles, two moles of H plus plus SO four two minus. Now these are aqueous, okay? Because H two SO four is a strong acid, it will dissociate completely. So initially, when we have zero point one of this, and we assume that we do not have any of this in the solution, as a equilibrium. All of this will dissociate, so we'll have 0 0.00. And over here, we are going to have 0 0.1, but it's going to be times 2 because the more ratio between H plus and H2SO4 is 1 is to 2. Okay, and then we'll have 0 0.1 of SO4 2 minus. Okay, SO4 2 minus. So when we have the concentration of H plus to be two to be two times zero point one then we'll be having pH to be called a negative log of H plus right now this one here is going to give us zero point two okay zero point two so when we put this value into the logarithm, we we'll have log of 0 0.2. And so the pH is going to be equal to 
minus sorry we're going to be having zero point six nine as a pH right okay so that's one is a strong acid now let's do with a weak base NH3 is a weak base and it has a concentration of 0 0.1 molar okay and we are also given the KB to be equal to 1.8 times 10 exponents minus 5 so how do we go about it now because NH3 is a weak base it is going to dissociate partially in solution to produce OH minus ions so what is the equation going to be like we have NH3 in water so because it is acting as a base let's see what happens we'll be having NH4 plus it will accept the proton from water okay and then produce OH minus in the solution initially the concentration will assume to be let's say it's C and at equilibrium we have initially we have zero zero and at equilibrium we'll say that X dissociated and so X here and X here so KB is going to be expressed as X times X which will be X squared divided by C minus X but let's assume that C minus X is negligible and so it is approximately C okay that will say that KB sorry will say that KB will be equal to X squared divided by C right X squared divided by C so this will imply that X will be equal to the square root of KB of ammonia times the concentration of the ammonia so let's let's do that all right so we have x sorry we have x of which is o is minus concentration so o is minus concentration will be equal to kb of ammonia which is 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 5 times its concentration 0 0.1 so what do we get for that now when we punch that value on the calculator we have 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 5 times 0 0.1 and then we have 1.342 1.342 times 10 to the power minus 3 okay so that's a concentration that we have for OH minus, okay. So POH will be negative log of OH minus. And so we have a negative log of this value, which is 1.34 times 10 to the power minus 3. So let's do that and see what we get. So when we do that, we're going to have 2.87, 2.87. But remember, pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So pH will be equal to 14 minus pOH. And so pH be 14 minus 2.87 and so pH is equal to 11.13 11.13 all right so that is the pH of the two solutions and I hope that you understand and this video helps you in your exam. Remember to subscribe and also like this video. Thank you.